Hello, I'm Todd Lamley, and this is your three-minute update. This section, we're going to cover two great features found in the new Cisco Firepower 7.1 code, FTD Bulk Action and Health Monitor. Inside the Devices page on Cisco Firepower, we can see all my devices listed here. And one of the great new features is I can click on all of my devices, no matter how many I had, and make changes all at once. I like to select bulk actions. Now I could just choose one device. Now this is huge update just in this alone because before we had to open the pencil, click the pencil, open it up, go to devices page and make these changes individually. Even if I had HA and I wanted to make changes, I still had to go into each device. In this case here, edit advanced settings. This is a great one to come into and not have to go to each individual device. AAB or automatic application bypass. I think it should be enabled by default. However, Cisco is doing security over connectivity because what this says is if a, if a packet comes in and Snort can't make a determination and they're backing up and Snort's kind of hosed, can't make a determination if it's pass or drop, then what this is going to do is just let it sit there. You're basically not passing traffic anymore. So this is going to say, nope, I want to pass traffic after a predetermined time. Three seconds is an eternity and that's the default. But automatic application bypass will then, after five minutes, restart Snort. We want this to do this in the background for us. Very important. Object group search and interface object optimization helps us if we have a lot of uh, objects, like 100,000 or something, enormous amount of interfaces and zones, and also ACP rules, a million of them or so on if you're an ISP. So if you're not a large environment, you don't want to do this. But if you are, I'm going to go ahead and turn these on. And it's going to say, hey, you know, this is going to create object optimization, but it's going to deploy a single rule per access control pre-filter rule, simplifies the configuration deployment and so on. But when you hit a rule in the ACP, it's got to then put that into RAM at that time. If we don't do this, it takes our objects, our interface, our zones, our HP rules, puts them all into RAMs, which is way more efficient, but you can't do that in a large environment. So if you don't have that, we won't turn this on. But we can turn them on all our devices here uh, in a group bulk. Transfer packets we want on, it is on by default, but we'll just make sure that it's enabled here. So I'll click this, take a second. It's gonna tell me, hey, I've turned on these bulk actions. This is a great way to save a lot of time and make sure everything is configured and enabled that you want without forgetting anything. The second thing is if I'm gonna come over here to my health monitor, and so notice I'm in health monitor, I can see my HA for my FMC. Now in here, if I highlight something here and open this device, we can just see the processes that are running on this device, that's it. But I can enable and run them all again. If I had a health event, I could fix it and then come here and say run all instead of waiting for the five minutes for it to run, which it does by default. If I click on a device, what's important here to see is that I'm gonna come up and get this nice graphical interface. We had some of this before, it's just getting better every time. Get a nice high availability graphic. But the one that's most important in the FMC that I think right now is this event capacity, which is brand new. What this allows me to do is see the logging. Now, if you have a large environment, again, this becomes very important. Connection events is my ACP rules, intrusion file, and so on. These are all my logging. Now, these are only set to 1 million by default. However, you can see this one set to 10 million because I went into the system config. Here it is right here. And went to database and changed this. You may be careful with changing these. Remember on the 45, 4600, you can have a billion events. I don't know if I'd set it to that, but you could raise these at 1 million events. Those are nothing, especially for the ACP. But this allows me to watch this and understand my, what's happening with my RAM and how much event capacity and logging that I'm getting. Disk usage, interfaces, and so on. Really great stuff here. Now, in my FTDHA, this is what we really want to see. I like to leave these open. If I come over here to overview, I like to leave these open, say on a screen in my data center or my customer's data center so they can keep an eye on these, see what's happening with the high availability, the interfaces over here, which I can change and look at a particular interface, management and so on. Notice I'm only looking at the last hour, we can change that. Memory, snort, system and so on. The CPU data on my actual devices here. It's gonna be even more data on the hardware 4140s here. If I had a lot of traffic going through, which I don't right now. Memory usage, my interfaces. And then I, again, I can pick particular interfaces and look at averages and input output and so on. Connections is important, especially if you're running Snort 3, because this will tell us if we have an elephant flow. What this means is if someone using a lot of bandwidth, a bandwidth hog, it's going to tell us who it is, So and using up and slowing down snort. So this is an important thing to see. 
before this graphic here, we had to go into the CLI and type it in to see that information. We can also see snort statistics, ASP drops within snort, and also get to our system and troubleshooting details. My name is Todd Lamley and that's your three minute update.